If we take a grain of sand in our fingers, stand under the night sky, and extend our hand to the distance of our outstretched arm, what part of the universe will this grain cover? Standing on the ground above us and to our sides, we can see a certain area of the sky. No matter which way we are facing, the sky will always extend in an arc from one horizon to the opposite horizon. So we can imagine that we are above some large greenhouse shaped like a hemisphere. We can see the stars, planets, moon, and so on, as if they were attached to the inner surface of this hemisphere. On the other side of the planet, we see the rest of this sphere. Such a sphere is called a celestial sphere. Of course, the celestial sphere is a purely abstract concept because the sphere does not exist and the objects visible in the sky are at very different distances. But this concept is just very convenient because it helps, for example, in determining coordinates in the sky. Since we are inside an imaginary sphere, we can easily divide it geometrically. A full arc is 360 degrees, one degree is 60 minutes, and a minute of arc is 60 seconds. Seconds are already quite small units. For example, one cent placed three kilometers away from us will form an angle of one second with our eye. If we grasp an object in our fingers and extend our hand at arm's length, its image will also form an angle with our eye. We can calculate this angle based on the diameter of the object and the distance from our eye. For a grain of sand one millimeter in size, held half a meter from our eye, it will be less than seven minutes of arc or 0.11 degrees. We assume that our grain is a cubic crystal, so the area of the obscuring wall is 0.0121 of a square degree. On the sphere, we have 41,253 square degrees. This is the entire celestial sphere, so we can divide this number by the area of a grain of sand held at arm's length, and we get 3,409,338 grains of sand that would cover the entire sky if they were arranged spherically side by side within an arm's radius of the eye. Now we take the number of two trillion galaxies that according to our 2016 estimates are present in the visible universe and divide it by the number of grains of sand that would cover the entire sky and we have the result. We also assume a perfectly uniform distribution of galaxies. So how many galaxies would be obscured by a millimeter grain of sand held in our fingers at an arm's length from our eye, 586,624 galaxies in an area of the sky so small that it is barely visible to the naked eye. This translates into a number of about 50 trillion stars. Of course, in order to observe such a small area, you need a very high resolution capability and a significant light gathering surface. Such parameters are possessed by the Hubble Space Telescope, for example. Hubble in 2003 observed a patch of sky smaller even than our grain received in an outstretched hand. He took 800 exposures of one area, pointing his detectors at it for 11 days. The result was this image, a very deep Hubble field of 10,000 galaxies. If Hubble were to photograph the entire celestial sphere in this way, it would have to work continuously for about a million years. But let's go back to our number of galaxies in a grain of sand. This number is limited. It determines the number of galaxies visible in this area, inside the observable universe, and only inside it. The universe is 13.8 billion years old, our best current data. The light from the farthest objects we can see was sent out at about this initial period, sometime after the beginning. Throughout the life of the universe, this light managed to reach us, and thus we can perceive it today. But there are areas and objects even farther away that the light has not yet managed to reach us during these almost 14 billion years. And this limit of what can be seen? Because light has already managed to reach here during the life of the universe. This limit is called the observable universe. So the observable universe is a sphere, and we are exactly in the center of this sphere, because we can see in all directions at a similar distance, which is currently about 46 billion light years. This is the current distance of the boundary of the observable universe because at the time when information from these farthest regions reached us, the universe was expanding all the time in the meantime. But the observable universe is most likely not the entire universe. This is our visible universe, and this is the edge of it. Not physical, of course. We just can't see further. Even if we used a telescope the size of a galaxy, we won't see the area beyond this boundary. Such information has not yet arrived here. 
Okay, but what is beyond that edge? Beyond the edge of our visible universe, most likely everything is more or less the same as in the observable universe, only farther and farther away. Maybe something is changing in the large-scale structures of the universe, but galaxies or stars should be exactly the same. And now such a very interesting and probably very important question. How big is this whole universe, of which our observable universe is a fragment? And we don't know that. We don't know how far the entire universe extends beyond the observable universe. There is no scientific consensus on that. One such estimate comes from Alan Gut, creator of the cosmological inflationary model. Alan Gutt put the size of the entire universe at 3 times 10 to 23 times the size of the observable universe. 23 orders of magnitude is a lot. It's about the same difference as between a beach ball and a cluster of galaxies. So it is likely that at some point we will be able to add a few zeros to our number of 586,624 galaxies. So let's end this topic by saying that a grain of sand held in your fingers at arm's length obscures 586,624 galaxies or 50 trillion stars in our observable universe.